Imperfect versus Preter. It's the thought that counts. Welcome to this tutorial on the uses of the imperfect and preterite tenses in Spanish. In part one of this video, we will briefly present the challenge that imperfect versus preterite poses to beginners, and we will review the conjugations of both tenses. In part two, we will present more in-depth explanation of their uses. In part three, we will tie up loose ends and provide more practice. The Atajos Notes and Exercises Packet accompanies this video presentation and contains many of the needed resources to master the imperfect versus the preterite. One of the most difficult of all concepts in Spanish is when to use the imperfect tense or the preterite tense. This difficulty stems from most students' desire to match Spanish structure or syntax to English in order to communicate. This route almost always leads to confusion and frustration. It may seem to be obvious to assert that Spanish and English are not the same language, but they are not. It is the thought behind the verb that counts more than the verb itself. Note the English expression. Marta ate breakfast. In Spanish, the translation can be either of the following. Marta comió desayuno, preterite, or Marta comía desayuno, imperfect. How is it possible to know which is correct? The answer lies not in translating the English Marta ate, rather it lies in understanding the unspoken thought behind the verb to eat. One of the major differences in using the preterite or imperfect is that the preterite refers to a single event, whereas the imperfect refers to a repeated or an ongoing event or action. Therefore, the thought behind the verb determines its conjugation. Marta comió desayuno. The thought was yesterday at 7.30, which indicates a single event in the past at a specific time. Marta comía desayuno expresses the thought every day at 7.30, and that indicates a repeated event in the past. Even though the English sentence is identical, Marte ate, the thought that generated each sentence is unique, and therefore Spanish uses either preterite or imperfect to express that hidden meaning. Note also that one could translate the Spanish verb comía in several different ways to match the English way of expressing the thought behind the verb. Marta comía desayuno todos los días a las siete y media. Translates as Marta ate breakfast every day at 7.30. Marta would eat breakfast every day at 7.30. Or even Marta used to eat breakfast every day at 7.30. It would be unnecessary in Spanish to translate words like would or used to because the verb itself expresses the repeated or ongoing action of eating. Let's recap this. It is the thought behind the verb that is more important than its direct translation. Spanish and English do not always share the same structure or syntax. There is certainly much more to learn about using the imperfect and preterite tenses, but let's review the conjugations first. It is not the purpose of this tutorial to drill you extensively in the conjugations for the imperfect or preterite tenses. The conjugations are available in your Atajos notes packet, and it is your responsibility to learn them. However, we will discuss them here briefly. The preterite tense has both regular and irregular forms. In fact, it has a lot of irregular forms. For regular verbs, drop the AR, ER, and IR ending as usual, and add the new ending depending on the subject. You might note that for regular verbs, the ER and IR endings are identical. There are many irregular preterite tense verbs. Here are several. Note how, with some, the entire verb is changed. These will have to be memorized individually. There are also irregular verbs in the preterite tense that change their stems and share a common set of endings. Here are the most common. With these verbs, the stem is written as indicated and then the proper ending is added. 
There are some spelling changes to maintain the correct pronunciation as well. In your Atajos packet are notes and several exercises for regular and irregular preterite verbs. Using the notes, complete the exercises before you continue with the conjugations for the imperfect tense. Pause the video here, please. The good news here is that the conjugations for the imperfect tense are much less complex. Regular AR verbs have a standard set of endings and, like the preterite, ER and IR verbs share identical endings. The best news is that there are only three irregular verbs in the imperfect tense throughout the entire language. Here are verbs using the regular endings. Hablar, comer, and vivir. By the way, the accents are important. Don't forget to learn them too. As was stated earlier, there are only three irregular verbs to learn. Here they are. Ser, ir, and ver. Memorize them. In your Atajos packet are notes and several exercises for regular and irregular imperfect verbs. Using the notes, complete exercises A and B before you continue with part two. Pause the video here, please. If you have a good understanding of how the two tenses are conjugated, it is time then to delve more deeply into their different uses. To make that less difficult, the Tahoe's Notes Packet includes a flowchart that clearly guides students through their choices of either the preterite or the imperfect. If you are able, take out the Tahoe's Packet now and turn to the imperfect versus preterite flowchart, or you may view it on the screen. In our earlier example, Marta ate breakfast, there were two concepts behind the verb ate. One was that it was only yesterday that she ate breakfast, and the other was that she ate breakfast every day. Let's decide which form to use by referring to the flowchart. We start in the square at the top and ask ourselves, does the verb express a single event in the past? If yes, as in yesterday at 7.30, the arrow points us to the preterite. If no, as in every day at 7.30, the arrow points us to the imperfect. Asking yourself, is it a single event in the past, yes or no, should always be the first filter that you use in your decision. If you are not sure, then follow the arrow downwards until an explanation matches your intent. In this case, you can see that the box ongoing repeated activities matches the idea of every day. And following its arrow, you also encounter alternative translations before being directed to the imperfect. Using the flowchart, let's practice choosing either the imperfect or preterite to express the following sentences. We will use English and give hints as to the thought behind the verb. Remember, don't focus on the English verb form. Focus on the thought behind it. Saul opened the doors last week. Imperfect or preterite? Preterite, because it was a single event, not necessarily a repeated or ongoing event. So, Saul abrió las puertas la semana pasada. We completed the homework last night. Imperfect or preterite? Preterite again, because it was a finished action in the past. So, Nosotros completamos la tarea noche. They always completed the homework on time. Imperfect or preterite? Imperfect, because it was a repeated action. Note how the English verb completed hasn't changed from the previous sentence. So, in Spanish, Ellos siempre completaban la tarea tiempo. 
Notice how in Spanish the verb changed to reflect the thought behind it, not necessarily just the English translation. My mother would kiss me goodbye before school. Imperfect or preter. Imperfect, because it was a repeated action. So, mi mamá me besaba antes de la escuela. Did you notice that the verb translation included the word would, as in would kiss? Spanish won't bother with adding an extra word like would, because the imperfect tense interprets the idea perfectly. Pause the video and complete exercise C in your Atajos notes packet. Unpause when you're ready to continue. Using the flowchart, we have given examples of verbs that express repeated or ongoing actions, one-time actions, and finished actions. As we continue downward, we come to other verb uses such as a series of one-time actions. Here is an example. Yo me desperté, me duché, y salí para la universidad. I woke up, I showered, and I left for the university. Although there are many actions here, they are all single actions and therefore are expressed with the preterite. As we follow the boxes downward, we come to telling time in the past. Telling time in the past is always expressed in the imperfect. You have learned that telling the hours and minutes of the day in Spanish requires the use of the verb ser. In the present tense, you would use s to express anything around one o'clock and son to express two o'clock or higher. Examples. Es la una y media. It is 1.30. Or, son las cuatro y quince. It's 4.15. To express these hours in the past, the concept is just the same. Just use era for one o'clock and eran for two o'clock and higher. Era la una y media means it was 1.30. And eran las cuatro y quince means it was 4.15. Exercise D in your Atajos notes packet will help you practice telling time in the past. Continuing downward, in the next box down we find that descriptions almost always use imperfect. It might help to return to the original filter. Is it a single event in the past? Let's say that we want to express the girl was tall. How is that description ever a single action or event? It would be a strange set of circumstances that would require that she was tall at some sort of event or finished action. Therefore, imperfect is the most logical form to use here. The last box, mental activity, can be difficult to master because, once again, it's the thought behind the verb that determines whether you use preterite or imperfect. Generally, wanting, thinking, feeling, and liking are non-specific mental processes that generally take the imperfect. However, when you can tie the emotion to a specific moment in the past, then the preterite can be used. Examples. Yo estaba muy enojado. I was very angry. The idea here is that your anger, a mental activity, was a state of being not tied to any specific moment, or at least that moment wasn't specified. However, it would be possible to change the expression to, yo estuve muy enojado. I got very angry. Notice how it now seems to point to a specific moment. The English translation even changes the verb from was to got. Ellos no lo creían. They didn't believe him. Once again, a non-specific thought without reference to a specific action. Use imperfect. However, ellos no lo creyeron. They didn't believe him. Is stronger when the preterite is used and the listener would assume that the event, them not believing his lie, was over. I tell my students to always use imperfect to express wanted, querer. It's not that the preterite of carrer isn't used, 
but it can be tricky. One good example of this is Marta y su hermana no querían ir al mercado. Marta and her sister didn't want to go to the market. Pretty straightforward. A non-specific mental state. However, Marta y su hermana no quisieron ir al mercado. This translates as Marta and her sister refused to go to the market. How is that possible? The interpretation of the second preterite sentence comes from the idea that not only did they not want to go, but they didn't. Therefore, refused reflects the stronger use of the preterite. For intermediate learners, my observation is that you'll do best to use querer in the imperfect tense rather than the preterite. That skill will come with more practice and knowledge. Let's recap. The first filter that should be used to decide between the imperfect and the preterite is is it a single action or event in the past? If that filter isn't specific enough, students can follow the flowchart for more specific uses. It's always the thought behind the verb that determines the use of the imperfect or the preterite tense. Pause the video now, please, and complete exercises E and F in the Atajos Notes packet. Keeping in mind that it's the thought behind the verb that determines the use of the imperfect or preterite tense, let's look at some ways that this affects the interpretation of Spanish with English listeners. Here's the verb querer. As discussed earlier, the strength of the preterite changes the significance of this verb. Yo no quería ir. I didn't want to go. There's no specificity to the verb when used in the imperfect. There it's quite possible that I went even though I didn't want to. Yo no quise ir. I didn't want to go or I refused to go. Preterite specifies a moment and the Spanish speaker is saying that not only did he not want to go, he didn't go. An actual action. Saber. This verb means to know facts or information. But see how the use of the imperfect or preterite changes its interpretation in English. Ellos sabían que Pablo no estaba ahí. They knew that Pablo wasn't there. It's a mental activity tied to no specific moment. However, ellos supieron que Pablo no estaba ahí is interpreted as they found out that Pablo wasn't there. Since the preterite, supieron, indicates a specific moment or action or event, the interpretation is changed to the stronger found out. How do you know something as an event? You find it out. Many other verbs in Spanish will do this as well. There is a list of them in the Atajos packet and their varied interpretations. One last thing. We saw earlier that the imperfect in Spanish can be interpreted in English in different ways. The phrase, Nicolás corría rápidamente, can be interpreted as, Nicholas ran quickly, Nicholas would run quickly, and Nicholas used to run quickly. All interpretations express the ongoing or repeated nuance of the imperfect tense. However, there is one more interpretation as well. It is, Nicholas was running quickly. Many students will point out that this is the past progressive and could be expressed as Nicolas estaba corriendo rápidamente. They would be right. However, it is perfectly legitimate to interpret Nicolas corría rápidamente as Nicholas was running quickly due to the ongoing nature of the imperfect tense. The past progressive with its use of estaba and corriendo is more of a descriptive storytelling style, insisting that it must be used to express was running and that using just Korea is incorrect is itself incorrect and falls into the trap of insisting that Spanish and English must match up word for word. Therefore, a phrase like Joe and Anna were kissing can be expressed two ways. Jose y Anna se besaban or Jose y Ana se estaban besando. 
The difference between the imperfect and the preterite can be challenging to students because its mastery depends more on the thought processes behind the verbs than the translation of the verbs from English to Spanish and vice versa. Therefore, students should always remember the maxim, it's the thought that counts. Thank you.